I gotta look at my cue baby. All right. Um, so we're still. What did we talk about last time? We talked about spirals a little bit. I don't have much to say about them though. Um, we should say something about. My goal today would be to talk about two other graphs. Yeah. You want to say something about spirals? It looks like a spiral. Yeah, exactly. This is not very helpful, right? <laughs> there you go. There, there are the notes on spirals. Um, it should be in two. I'll try to explain why this would happen, right? But it should be kind of intuitively true that if we have r equals theta, then we get a spiral. It, there was one like that on homework, right? You at least like kind of feel a little bit of the spiral. Um, so why does that happen? Well, if theta is zero, then we're at the origin. But if theta is a little tiny angle of some kind, then we're a little bit far away. And then as theta gets bigger, we get farther and farther away. So what happens if you were to like to do that? Okay, so turn around the circle, and as you turn around the circle, go further and further away from the center of the circle. What would happen, right? When you start to spiral, yeah. as, as you move around the circle, I also require that you don't get farther away. Um, so I don't know. That's maybe not an intuitive explanation, but. Um, but R equals theta would be a spiral. You can feel free to graph it in your calculator to confirm. Um, or R equals theta over 10, or you know, is maybe a, you might call it a slower spiral, whatever. Um, okay, but feel free to graph it in your calculator. And when you do, uh, choose theta min to be zero and theta max to be, I don't know, 70 pi or something like that, and let it spiral a whole bunch. Because in zero to two pi, um, it'll go from being R equals zero to R equals 6.28, right? It'll, it'll make sense, it'll spiral out uh, just once around. It won't be very much spiraling. So make it make make it like zero to 10 pi or something and make it make it really kind of give, give you a couple spirals um, to make it look pretty. And then zoom out on it, right? Zoom way out and you know make your theta min and max large. Um, what happens if you make the theta min, like what if we went from negative 10 pi to positive 10 pi? Anyone try that on their graph? We guess you get another spiral too on top of the other one. Um, so then it doesn't really look like uh, a spiral anymore. It looks like, you know, check it out, you'll see. It's like two spirals going a left hand and a right hand spiral on top of each other. So maybe if you want to make a, a spiral look good, you can use your theta min to be zero and your theta max to be whatever you like, right? Anyway, the, the point is, these are good, these are fun to draw pictures of. Um, you can have fun on your calculator. Uh, I'm actually not going to graph it up here, though, because it's a little, it is a little weird to graph on a polar coordinate grid, um, just because the, the R values are not real nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, Andrew? Um, if you're you just hit on. Yeah, yeah, on. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing to know. You're gonna be like taking the <laughs> AP calculus test or something. You're gonna be like taking the batteries out because you can't write. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, just on, hit on. It quits the graph. That's a good thing to know. If anyone has never told you that. Okay. Uh, so two graphs I'd like to show you today. Uh, a lemnus skate, which is kind of just a, a fun little artifact of history, kind of, and then also uh, lines. Right, would be the two goals today. So a lemnus skate or a lemniscuit. I don't know. People pronounce it different ways. Um, has this equation, and, the, and the, this, the words I've put up here don't really help you understand too much about it, except that it's a, one of these. It looks like this, r squared equals 16 cosine 2 theta. But it doesn't help you at all understand what it looks like. So we'll just graph one, and then you'll know. Okay. Um, but one thing you should see, it's a little weird. It's got this r squared in it. Um, you're welcome to actually take a square root if you like. Uh, we get or you could even, in this particular case, I made 16. That's nice, right? So you, you could even write this way. Um, all right, so the weird, thing, the weird thing is about this is that there's a square root, right? But imagine there wasn't a square root. So let's see, again, we want to try and analyze this without a calculator. So let's think kind of higher level about this. What if there wasn't a square root? Ignore for a second the plus or minus and the square root. What do you see? It would just be 4 cosine of 2 theta, which is just a rose curve. So this, in some senses, I want you to think of it as just being a rose curve, OK? If theta is 0, what do you get for r? 4? OK. If theta is, let's not go too quickly here. Let's say if theta is pi over 4, what do we get? 
we hit zero. I just want to make sure you do see that there is a time and a, a place where when r is zero. Um, what about in the pi direction? Let's jump over there. Do we get do we get four over there? One, two, three, four, because we get two pi in here, right? I just do that too long. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, anyway, I think we can agree that we get those three points at least on our graph. There and there and there. All right, and then the, 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 the weird one maybe is what happens when theta is pi over two? Yeah, there's a negative then under the radical, and so, yeah, it's not defined at pi over 2, and also at 3 pi over 2, uh, we don't get anything. So if you were to think of this as a Rose curve, you'd be right, right? It just has two petals and two imaginary petals, right? So feel free to graph this now on your calculator, and you'll see it as it graphs it, it'll graph this curve. Right? And then it'll pause for a while. And not it won't be drawing anything. Why? Well, because when theta is between uh, uh, pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4, you get values on this curve that are for a cosine of 2 theta that are negative. Right? And it'll not be drawing anything for a while. And then it'll come back. It'll be like, oh, I'm back. And it'll start drawing again. Try, try you'll see. Um, So well, that's what a lemniscate looks like. Alana, you had a question? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so like I said earlier, it's kind of somewhat um, an artifact of history more than it is like an interesting graph that we'll like study a lot, right? Um, it uh, should remind you of something, this symbol. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the infinity symbol, right? Um, so this is, so maybe that's part of the reason that, you know, this is the first, uh, you know, people, I think it's the, 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 the thing that underlies the symbol, but um, maybe it was used before they came up with a equation to model it nicely, but. Um, so, the only, re the only thing we ever put in here is two. You can make it other things, though. There's no reason one couldn't. I don't know why. It's just not then called a limit. Like I said, there, another graph. <laughs> not, that's not one to get super excited about. Um, uh, think about what would happen with sine 2. What would happen if this was 16 sine 2 theta? It would be another good question. Yeah, would it stand up and down? Up and down? Is that right? No. <laughs> think, about, think about it. I mean, think what would happen with a rose curve. What, 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 is, what does a rose curve look like if you make this uh, for, if you make this uh, 16 cosine of, so oh. sine of 2 theta? What does a rose curve look like if you make it a sine instead of cosine? We just did this normal. Yeah, instead of looking like this, it looks like this, right? So, same, same deal, except which two petals are missing? Well, it's these here. So, so um, it's in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant you get a pedal instead. You can play around with it, you'll see that we're right. Yeah, I thought there was another hand somewhere. Is, are, we, are we good on this? I don't have much more to say really at all about lemniscus. That was the one slide on lemniscus. Yeah. Can it ever be vertical? Um, we, could, we could make it be vertical somehow. How could you do that? I don't know that they still call it a lemniscus or not. That's a good question. But, but could we make it vertical? How would you do it? Yeah. Yeah, if you just make this a negative 16, boom, now it's vertical. Because when is it undefined now? Well, now it's undefined right out of the right, right here and here, boom. But then when is it good? If I'm, it's actually good here and here. Yeah, try it. You can put a negative under here, and that's what you'll get on your calculator. You'll get the, those two petals. By the way, your calculator doesn't do a great job of graphing. Does anyone do it? Yeah. It's like kind of missing the part near the origin, right? Because you know the plus or minus. It's not the domain for theta necessarily. It's just that like. Like it's the maybe if you make your theta stack smaller, it'll get pick up more values close to well, it. I didn't think we had to do with the plus or minus. Yeah, 
Mm. Yeah, I don't know why that should work better, maybe, but yeah, your calculator is not brilliant, though. You know, it's just the calculator. Calculators can only calculate; they cannot do mathematics. What that quote says up there. Okay, so let's let's keep going. Um, let's talk about lines. This is where we want to really spend some time today. Um, uh, yeah, this is like our last big topic. You're like, really? We did all these crazy curves, and now, now, finally, last, we're gonna do lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Curvy things are fun and easy in polar coordinates. Lines are, are more are trickier. Well, they're not too bad. It's not too bad. All right. In order to do lines, though, we're gonna have to talk uh, again about um, normal form. And I will put candy. Uh, a piece of candy on on this one. Do you, can you remember normal form? The equations are normal form. Yeah. Jerry, like AX plus BY. That's called standard form. We had something very specific we learned for the first time this year that we called normal form. Uh, um, a cosine x minus sine. Close. There's a cosine and sine involved. Okay. I think it's x cosine a plus y cosine e minus r. I'll give it to you. There's nothing special about the letters. Um, yeah, it's x times the cosine of an angle plus y times the sine of that angle minus that number. Um, the number. Well, you could have remembered too. Um, we use the letters phi and p. And uh, if you remember, by normal form, we meant we're talking about the, the, this little line segment called the normal to the line. You draw a line segment from the origin to the line perpendicularly. Yes, you're just coming back. The length of that line segment is p. That's called, called the length of the normal. And phi, or phi, depending on who you ask, is the angle that that little line segment, the normal, makes with the positive x-axis. Right. So I'll remind you that in a second, too. But just a little refresher. It's all coming back. It hurts, I know. I know. <laughs> Sorry. OK. Give it a second. Um, go with me, though. OK? Here we go. This is a little derivation. And eventually, uh, at the bottom of the screen, I'll have it in a box. OK? So just appreciate this. You can write it down if you like, but you don't have to. x and y are our cosine theta and our sine theta. Right? So I'm going to make that replacement. And now it's in polar form, but now I need to clean it up a little bit, OK? I'm going to move the P over to the right side and factor out an R on the left. And then what is in the parentheses? What do you see? Close. It's the, yeah, it's the cosine difference formula for theta and phi, right? So there we have it. The polar form of the line is R cosine theta minus phi and equals P, where P and phi so you do have to remember normal form, right? Where p and phi are the things I just said, right? p is the length of the normal to the line, and phi is the angle with the positive x-axis. So you don't have to have the derivation necessarily, but there it is in a box. Sometimes we might present it the other way, too, where we have it solved for r, right? You might write r equals p divided by cosine of phi minus theta minus phi. What happens if phi is zero? What do we have? Then we have r cosine just theta, and it's just x equals p, which is what? Kind of like. Where are my alpha one students? OK. Yeah, vertical high. No, they don't know that, actually. Um, uh, what if phi is 90 degrees? It is. Can you justify why algebraically that makes sense? R cosine of theta minus 90 would be, um, yeah. Yeah, so it would be R sine theta if in that case, and that would be just y equals p. So, yeah. All right, and then if you have another phi value between 0 and 90, or other angles, for that matter, you get other, other lines, right? Now we can finally do lines because we haven't been able to do that.
Sorry. Wait while they just don't need anyone. Okay. Three another step. All right, the Normal is the length that is the um, is the line segment. So draw a line, any line you like, and then draw from the origin. Drop a perpendicular from the origin to your line. Can you imagine doing that? A perpendicular line from the origin to your line, so wherever your line is. Can you imagine doing that? Right. So you take your line. Where's your line? I don't know. Oh, if it goes to the origin, then that's a little bit of an issue, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it can't go through the origin. Otherwise, this is undefined. Um, y equals x plus 3. Okay, so something like that. Okay. Um, so you don't go from the origin out to your line perpendicular. That is the normal, right? The length of the normal is p. The angle that that makes with the positive x-axis is 5. Right. Okay. All right, so let's show you by what we, mean, what we mean by that. Let's graph this guy right here. R equals 4 over cosine theta minus 3 pi over 4. So P, if we're using the language from the previous slide, P is, P is and phi is what and what? 4 and 3 pi over 4. So this is, in fact, very similar to the line that Helen just described. Okay, We're going 4 units out in the 3 pi over 4 direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's the normal. We're just going to make, I'll just make that little dashed line just to emphasize that is not the line we're interested in. The line we're interested now in, in is the one we're going to make perpendicular there, right? So the line that this describes is this one here. And I know you're dying to have it in rectangular form, too. It doesn't say to do this, but let's just do it for fun. You want to convert this to rectangular form? I'll multiply that out. And then I'll use the cosine difference form. I'm just going to run the little proof I had backwards, right? Uh, this is r times cosine theta cosine 3 pi over 4 plus sine theta sine 3 pi over 4 equals 4. And then, um, you know, nice stuff happens. We have r cosine theta times the cosine of 3 pi over 4, which is negative root 2 over 2, plus r sine theta times root 2 over 2 is the sine of 3 pi over 4 equals 4. And, and then if you haven't seen it, do you see it now? It's all, now it's in regular form here, we get in, in um, rectangular form. It's x, uh, we could write negative root 2 over 2 times x plus root 2 over 2 times y equals 4, right? Good way to write it. Multiply through by 2 if you like. You could divide by root 2 if you like. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Um, anyway, is it obvious though that this line has a slope of 1? Maybe we knew that before we ever did any of this work at all, right? Uh, and its y intercept is 4 root 2, right? Which, which actually you could probably figure out by inspection also for this particular line. But, um, but you could put it back in rectangular form, too, if you like. Using the cosine difference formula is the trick. Josh? Yeah, the way I did it is fine. Yeah, yeah, I know. One point. Well, I'm also making it very clear on my picture, at least, what the normal is and what the angle is and stuff. So.
any comments about that? Does it make you happy? Bill? Just to double check the normal yeah. things in degree angle. Yeah, yeah, sorry. All right, let's try converting to polar form going the other way, right? So doing what we just did, but in reverse. A little tricky because there's a little first step that we need to be careful about. And I'm going to have to remind you about. Really, the first thing that we might want to do is convert this to normal form, like for last semester style. So I might like get this to standard form here. So we have um, 3x minus y minus 1 equals 0. We like that to be a minus there, um, minus 1 at the end. Is this coming back? Let's see if it comes back. I'm about to divide through by something. I'll be very impressed if you remember what it is. We're going to divide this entire equation through by the square root of something. Yeah? Yeah, it's the coefficients on, a, on, a, on, a, on x and y here, right? So 3 squared plus 1 squared. And the reason we do that is because right now, 3 and negative 1, those are not the cosine and sine <laughs> of any angle, right? But in a second, we are going to have the cosine and sine of some important angle, okay? Um, it's not a nice angle, actually, right? 3 over root 10, x minus 1 over root 10, y minus 1 over root 10 equals 0. Okay, so now I claim that right now, just having done those two things, um, that this is in normal form, right? And if this really is in normal form, then this equation admits what p is right away. What's p? Yeah, p is 1 over root 10. So we're actually not very far away from the origin. Um, this tells me that the cosine of phi is equal to 3 over root 10, and that the sine of phi is equal to negative 1 over root 10. And now you should be able to also tell me what phi is, right? Somehow, with a calculator, perhaps, right? <laughs> we go ahead and give it to me. How are you going to get it? I mean, this discussion is one we've had a bunch of times before already. What quadrant is the angle in? Right, is it clear that this is a fourth quadrant angle? Since x is positive and y is negative, So yeah, what are you typing in your calculator? People who are typing this in your calculator? What are you doing, Shree? Yeah, maybe inverse sine of negative 1 over root 10. Or you could do, since it's the fourth quadrant, you could also do inverse tangent of Yeah, negative one third, right? Inverse tangent of negative one third to give you the same thing on your calculator as what Sheree just is typing in now. And in whatever you like. What are you doing? Radius, degrees, what do you like? I don't know. Someone give me some correct answer in some form or another. One three two negative one three two two. All right, I'm stealing. Negative. Uh, do you guys agree too? Rate in radians. If you didn't agree, no harm done. I didn't say one way or the other, so whatever, it's fine. Uh, you could also add two pi to that if you like, if you're if you're into positive angles, but you don't have to. There's nothing unique about the angle phi, right? We could all have a different answer if we like, and we might all be right. Um, but this is fine, whatever. So what do we have? R cosine of theta minus, or how about plus, point three two two radians equals 1 over root 10. And that's our final answer to put it in a box. Uh, so does that make sense? That's what we're looking for. And please, please, on a, on a quiz or a test, and when I ask you to express something in polar form, I'll, I'll give you instructions just like this. And I always get, I put money on this, I always get people who fill in something for r and theta, right? Don't do that. r and theta are variables, right? Phi and p are constants. It's like the m and, the m and b in y equals mx plus b or something, right? Someone asks you for equation of a line, you would expect there to be an x and a y involved, right? Still. <laughs> Likewise here, in polar coordinates, I'm expecting you, please, there still be better be an r and a theta somewhere in your equation. Don't like plug stuff in for those. Those are variables. 
They take on various values, depending on your whim, right? Okay, so that's that's how this feels. Um, we could do one more. I, I, we don't need to, but why don't we do this one for practice? Go ahead. Go this this rectangular form back to polar form. This is the easier direction, actually, right? While you work on that, I will close out your homework. Your homework uh, is a couple book problems. Please make sure you do those. And also, this book, because your book doesn't really have much lines and lines and stuff. Really. Here ends the quiz material with this homework. Yeah, so you have a quiz on Wednesday. Let's make sure everyone knows that. We'll do this one without a calculator, right? It didn't say to get it, get it in any particular form, it just said to rectangular form. So whatever, if you have the equation I have, that's fine. If you want to put it in slope intercept form, that'd be fun too, right? Let's do that. Y equals negative root three times X minus 10, right? So this is the line. Now that maybe helps you picture it, right? Uh, let's visualize it both ways, right? This is the way back in algebra one you would have visualized it. It's the line that has a Y intercept of negative 10 and a slope of negative root three. Okay, I think I can picture that. Does that also seem to be the picture you're getting when you picture it in the following way? Up here, let's go back to polar form. Five or six radians down this way and five units out. Are you going to get the same line? I'm sorry, the slope is uh, positive root three, isn't it? That's a good check. Right? Does that seem right to you? 